Let's go to Andrew Raycroft, who joins us on the Harbor One Hotline from Nesson. Razor, I felt like Bruins fans kind of looked at this game here as sort of like a, I don't know, measuring stick. You know, I mean, the Bruins are on a roll, but we know what the Tampa Bay Lightning are, and boy, did they respond. I mean, that wasn't as close as that 5-3 to three score. No, it sure wasn't. The Bruins didn't play great for the first 12, 13 minutes of the game, but but then got to it and, and dominated for the next 40 minutes of that and, and let off the gas at the end and made it a little closer, I suppose. But uh, we looked at each other after the game, and said, is this schedule actually really that much tougher in the next 13 games for these guys? The way they played and the way they dominated, they took all of the Tampa's good players out of the game right off the bat and just, just took it to them. It was it was quite impressive. So a couple of things for me. One, okay, so is, is this a um, – are they so good that they can be a light switch team? Like they can just flip the switch and then just turn into a completely dominant team even though they're kind of lethargic and, and sleepwalking, like you said, in that in that first period? And the second period, they just they just took over. Like like even like the shots on net in the first period, it was like fourteen to seven, you know, in the first period. And then in the fourteen to seven in the second period for the Bruins, yet they get like three goals, like something crazy. Yeah, they can. They, I'm glad. By the way, Christian, I'm glad you survived the the catch off. <laughs> Thank um, you. And, and the slow <laughs> ball. I'm glad you, you didn't take any time off. That's right. You run the air. Right. Oh man, <laughs> there was no winners in that. There was no winners in that yeah, catch off. Yeah. Um, in the end, we no, were both I, losers. Hey, hey, Razor. By the way, we call him. He's our Nick Felino. You know what I mean? Takes a <laughs> takes something off the face. No big deal. Yeah. Comes out the next night. Oh, that night. That's it. absolutely good karma. In that there was no doubt he was scoring last night. Nick Felino. You get stitches in the morning. You're always going to score at night. Uh, the, the Bruins can be complacent at times within games. I think they're they're very concerned and very. Um, aware that they can't go on a stretch and take a week off or take two weeks off because you just you have to get better. The, the year is so long in the NHL that you do have to stack weeks on top of weeks and get better as individuals and better as players because the playoffs come fast and furious. But but I think we saw last night. Like we're gonna see stretches of games where they're not sharp because it, it's just so hard to be mentally. Uh, excited, mentally desperate when you're 17 and two, and when things are going this way, there, there's going to be times when it looks like they're they're making too many passes and too many easy plays. But but again, I think this group understands that very well. Um, they're not a young group where they're going to let all of this get ahead of them. So random observation for me, you know, um, like David Krejci slap shot goal. Uh, all I kept thinking was like, you know, I don't know who the announcers were. They're like, oh, you never see that. Oh, look, a slap shot. I'm like, can you explain, like, why is that, like, not a thing anymore? Or is, is that just like a European thing with Krejci? What is that about? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like his knuckle I know exactly puck. what you're talking about. I'm going to explain. Yeah. So the reason why it doesn't happen is because everyone's so fast now. And everybody closes out defensively so quickly compared to what it was way back in the day when, when guys would just wind up for the slapper down the wing like we saw. But you saw last night, Krejci, they made the cross. McAvoy makes the cross ice pass, and Krejci has all kinds of room. And that's why he can get that slapper off. A lot of times the defenseman's right up in his grill, and you have to make a, two passes to get somewhat open. So the most of the time you don't see a slapper only because everybody's so fast, so big, so long that there's just no time to take it out in the ice. Patrice Bergeron getting his 1,000th uh, career point huge moment on the road and it seemed like even some of the lightning fans were uh you know giving him a little bit of applause and respect is he the most respected player in the nhl right now yes he is uh, i and i would i would say Sidney crosby's close behind alex ovechkin like the all-time all-time great yeah. um but patrice is right there he's considered an all-time great i know he's not going to have the most points or the most goals but but he is considered an all-time great, and, and the way he handles himself, the way he treats every player in the game, he, the way he treats the game in general, and, and there's the, the reputation that he has is as good as anyone that, that's played the game before. So, so yes, he is, he is as respected as anyone else in the NHL. And, you know, seeing the reaction from Marshan, you know, even though he scores the goal, he goes right to Bergeron. <laughs> the whole team is on the ice. I heard some people might have an issue with the kind of like the whole team coming on the ice, but I think it kind of speaks volumes to not just to respect to Bergeron, but maybe the closeness of this group, which we've seen throughout the year. I agree. It's both. It's both. They're, they're, they're a tight group, and they know 
understand what they're playing for at this point. And, and that's a lot of it is, is that older core. And, um, and certainly it, it is funny watching Brad, the little brother, Brad, yeah. and how much he, he, he loves and respects Patrice. And he just, he can't control it. He, he, he never controls his emotions. And certainly when, uh, when his buddy gets gets a thousand points, he and listen, Brad's gonna let him remind him every single day of his life that he's the one who scored on his one thousand points. <laughs> so you know, there, there's no question that's gonna happen for, till till the day they die. So it came yeah. with a price. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Patrice might need to buy him a watch or something like. You know, they'll talk him into something. We're talking to Andrew Raycroft here in the Harbor One Hotline and Razor. I, I think it was uh, last week we were talking to Gresham Keith talking about this team. At times they're winning so much. There's been some times when maybe they look a little complacent. Does this schedule coming up? Because it looked like they, last night they were fantastic. Does that sort of is it good timing for them to kind of be like, okay, now we got the challenge, right? Here come the Panthers, Carolina, Tampa again. Then you got this West Coast trip. You got Vegas. So it seems like the, it's almost not another wake up call for a team that's been playing great. But I think it could help. Absolutely, it, it is because, it, like you said, they were wide awake when they got down one nothing last night in Tampa Bay. They got they got you know. Told that they need to play better and, and figure it out, and then uh, you've got Carolina coming in. You lo- lost last year in the first round to that team. You want to set them up on Friday, and then of course Colorado. You've got them twice, so the Stanley Cup champions come to town. You're going to have your radar up, and then Bruce Cassidy in the Vegas Knights. So, so yes, it is a perfect time to get them through the holiday. Holidays is always really difficult in the NHL too to get up. You've got people coming in and out of town. You start looking ahead to January and the dog days of the season. So it's it, this is a very good timing of the schedule to have uh, their full their full focus with these teams coming in. So you know, I know Charlie McAvoy was was like this you know preseason like candidate for the Norris Trophy, and they we're looking at a guy like you know Hampus Lindholm as like you know almost being as just as valuable. What do you make of just like his just overall uh, production this year and how it relates to that award? Well, he's, he's yeah, Hampus is definitely in the mix. Last night was his first minus game as a Boston Bruin. Hmm. First game ever. He's played playoff season. I think it ended up being 33 games that he was a minus player uh, in a 5 3 win. So uh, Hampus has been very crucial to this team. This. The, on this run and coming into this season, he was he was looked at because of the Charlie McAvoy being out of the lineup for this long. So he's got his name in the Norris Trophy discussion. Uh, the guy out in Colorado, that Kale McCarr guy, the first, the fastest to 200 points in an NHL defense history, faster than Ray Bork, faster than Bobby Orr last night. So I think he's going to have a lot to say about the Norris Trophy. But Hampus Lindholm certainly in the top ten of everyone's books now in the NHL. Does he have a nickname? Campus, uh, probably Lindy. Really? I mean, I feel like he, his name is. Guys. I feel like his name is perfect for Big Ham. It's perfect for Big Ham. Maybe you can get that going, yeah, right? Big he, Ham, Hammer, better than Lindy. Yeah, oh, I like Lindy. Hammer. Lindy. Better than Lindy. No, Hammer's good. He's a Hammer's definite good. candidate for Big Ham. No, Hammer's I like good. Hammer. I don't I like know if Hammer. Uh, Hammer. Hammer. I will give him Hammer. Razor, I want. I wanted to ask you because I know last night maybe not so, but the third period they've been outstanding. I heard some of the guys talking about at one point like Montgomery and the scheduling, right? More days off. Now you tell me, morning skates kind of optional? Is that norm? And even when they skate, even when they lace them up, it's like twenty minutes tops. Is that all norm, or is that just like the new NHL kind of thing? It's it's the the NHL has changed a lot in in load management. There's no quite like when I played. Those were mandatory, and you get some days where you end up out there for 45 minutes if the coach was mad or in a bad mood uh, or, or wasn't paying attention. Uh, the days off that are mandatory now. That's actually in the CBA that you need at least one day off a week. Uh, so, so, yes, the, the, load, the load management's much different now. The skates are much different now. They're very concerned about, about rest and timing, and I think it helps in the third period, but I think more so with the Bruins and what we're seeing their conditioning wise is their ability to play four lines and six D. Mm-hmm. You look at the minutes, Patrice has only been over twenty minutes once, twice all season, and and everybody else is fifteen, sixteen minutes right across the board. So I think that's what's really allowing the Bruins to take over the third period. But but there's no question there's a huge emphasis put on how much guys are working and how many how many miles they're putting on their body through the season. All right, Razor, listen, we appreciate it. Bruins are on fire. Big week ahead. Uh, Have a great Thanksgiving. Look forward to talking to you next week.
Awesome, guys. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy right. the turkey.